Hello, my name is Jeff Hall, and I'm a member of the Skylight Engineering Team. I'm uh, based in Washington State in the United States, and I'd like to spend a little bit of time today talking to you about uh, APIs or Application Programming Interfaces and how the use of APIs uh, from Skylight can allow you to include additional data in applications of your own that has originated from, originated from Skylight. So I'll step back and just talk about what are APIs and why would people be interested in using them. And of course, the classic, the classic problem is that the internet has many, many information and data resources, but they're spread all over the place in different web applications and different websites. And all the information that you might need to complete a specific task might need to be drawn from several different websites, which can be difficult and time consuming. So of course the ultimate uh, goal is if to simplify workflows, if you can use a single interface that includes all the information that you want to use in one place, in one view, that would really be the ideal presentation. And this is exactly uh, where APIs can be very useful. So here's a sort of a visualization of the problem that uh, a user has many screens showing information from many different websites uh, and to get the full picture that they want of what's going on in a maritime space, they have to use all of these different information sources and log into separate websites, keep track of changes in all of those websites. So that can be, um, uh, something that's, that's difficult to integrate and to keep on top of changes that are occurring in all of those different um, applications that you're looking at. And here is hopefully the solution to the problem, which is to take a single interface that's capable of pulling information from multiple sources using APIs and presenting those in a single view. So that in this example, there are two cards that are displaying on the screen. Each of those is actually coming from a different website and is being retrieved via an API so that all the information can be presented in one place. And this is where APIs or application programming interfaces come into play. And an API is really just a software interface that allows computer systems to talk to each other. That's really all it is. And in order for that to happen, of course, programmers do have to do some work so that an organization that makes an API available can share information with partners that are going to use that API uh, about what they'll need to do to write code to communicate with that API. Um, now, there are several different API patterns that have developed over the years because APIs are, are not something new. They've been around for many, many years, really since the beginning um, of the internet. Uh, and some common patterns that are used and you might have heard of are GraphQL, REST, and SOAP. And REST, or the uh, representational state transfer, is probably one of the most widely used. It's been around for, for many, many years. And it's um, a very simple pattern. And almost any web, web developer that's out there that has worked with APIs is probably familiar with REST. So it's, it's a good um, place to start uh, for people developing APIs, but there are some more sophisticated patterns that have developed in recent years and GraphQL is one of those. Graph, uh, GraphQL happens to be the pattern that is used by the Skylight API as well. So just to give you an example of exactly how an API is used, um, a very common API that lots of websites make use of is the Google Maps API. And so you may be familiar with Google Maps itself as a web application or as um, an application on a mobile device like a phone. But this API can be very useful if you're using any type of an application that uh, relies on finding a location on a map. So an example might be a rideshare application, something like Lyft or Uber where you want to provide an address to the service provider, it might be Lyft or Uber, 
And when you type that address in, the application can send a request to the Google, Google Maps API, which will respond with geo coordinates, latitude and longitude. And that allows the application that you're using to, to take a, a street address and show it as a specific location on a map, which of course is very, very useful in a number of different contexts, contexts so that you can zero in on a specific location. Uh, so this, this is just an example of a widely used API that um, many, many different web applications and websites make use of. Here's just an example of what it might look like if you were creating the code to, to query an API over the web. So in the upper half of the screen is an example of the request that would go to the API. And it's a query and it's looking for events and there's various filters and types of event metadata that are being requested. And then on the lower half of the screen, you see what comes back after you make that request to an API and it sends back data in response to your query. And then programmers on your end would, would want to take that data and integrate it with an existing web application. Uh, what you're seeing here is really the behind the scenes uh, work that's going on. Typically a human would not really look at this unless they were writing the code to communicate with an API. There are lots of APIs in the maritime space. Uh, some are free, some have free tiers and then paid tiers, but there are quite a different, um, quite a, a selection of APIs that are out there that might be of interest to people working in the, uh, the maritime domain. I've listed a few examples here. There are many others, but for example, some of these APIs will provide weather information some of them will provide information about vessels or about ports or things like that. So these are data sources that might have very interesting information that you want to make available within an application that you're already using. And because all of the examples on this slide uh, do make APIs available, that is something that would be possible for you to draw data from them into your own source. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Skylight's API specifically. And if you're um, not familiar with uh, the Allen Institute for Artificial Intelligence, that's the organization that um, provides Skylight. Uh, a, we, 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 for short, we refer to the institution as AI2, and it is a nonprofit based in Seattle, Washington, and many of our staff members do work in Seattle. And it was, uh, AI2 was founded by Paul Allen, who you may know is a, a founder of Microsoft, but he was also a philanthropist. And especially later in life, he started to devote more of his efforts to his philanthropic interests. And uh, Paul did pass away a few years ago, but his family and his estate have kept up the work that he started. And one of the things that he was interested in was applying technical and engineering solutions to try and reduce illegal fishing. And that is where Skylight began. The project started during Paul's lifetime. And then after he passed, it was continued by his family and by his estate and by um, AI2. And Skylight became the name of the product. Uh, there are about 20 people that work on the team, including myself. Um, that includes folks that work in uh, product development, people that, uh, people that work in customer support, and people that work on the engineering team. And I'm a member of the engineering team. And we also integrate uh, very closely with some other products that come from AI2, including Earth Ranger uh, and Satlas, which are uh, uh, just like Skylight, they are free products available from AI2. So Skylight is uh, very specifically designed as an AI-driven tool to provide intelligence in the maritime enforcement space, uh, particularly with a focus on IUU phishing. And this, this is the layer where the API becomes relevant because we do have our own web UI for Skylight. So you can point a browser at Skylight and if you have a, an account, a login, then you can access all of our information 
uh, through that web interface. So you don't need to, to do any programming to take advantage of Skylight. But we also have an API. So if you're using a tool of your own, uh, a web tool of your own that already is something familiar to you and it provides lots of the information that you want, you can use Skylight's API to pull data from our system into that interface or that platform that you're already using. And we do indeed provide Skylight uh, free of charge to qualifying agencies that work in the, uh, the maritime enforcement space. So I'll talk now a little bit more specifically about our API and how it works. Uh, we've got a couple of links on this slide for you to see much more detailed information about our API. But in the left-hand side of this slide, you can see an example of the documentation that lists the sort of data that can be retrieved from the Skylight API. And what you're seeing here is only a sample. There's quite a bit more um, than that that is available. But this just gives you an idea of the kind of information that can come back. In, in this specific case, we're showing the different event types that are trapped within Skylight. Now, on the right-hand side, there's a listing of some of the agencies and partners that are already using the Skylight API so that they can integrate information from Skylight into their own platforms. Um, everyone from the Argentinian Coast Guard to the Brazilian Navy, as well as Sea Vision, which is a product of the United States government, IORIS, which comes from the European Union, and so on. So all of these agencies have, uh, have integrated with the Skylight API based on efforts by uh, web developers on their side who have simply written code to reach out to our, our API and pull back information that they're interested in. So here's an example of one of our specific integrations. In this case, it's Sea Vision. Um, from the United States government. What's, what you're seeing here is the interface to Sea Vision. So it's, if you were a Sea Vision user, this is something that you would be very familiar with. And the nice part is if you look on the lower part of these two images, uh, there are lists of filters and options to include information from Skylight in the view that you're seeing. So that when you're connected via your browser to Sea Vision, you can decide if you want to see specific event types from Skylight. And in this case, uh, programmers at Sea Vision already did the work to integrate with the Skylight API. So for you as a user in your browser, you just make selections. But all of that data is coming from the Skylight API. This is just a little bit uh, a further um, evidence of what is seen in Sea Vision in terms of the Skylight data from our API. In the left, you can see examples of where you can filter around uh, parameters to control exactly which events from Skylight would you like to see. So for example, you could put date filters on that. And on the right-hand side, you can see then that when you see vessel history information that's present presented in Sea Vision, they they put a tag on each of those entries so that you can tell what is coming from Skylight. Another of our partners, as I mentioned earlier, is IORIS from the European Union. And here are some uh, screen captures from their interface. And in this case, what you're seeing are small event details cards that have that black border at the top. And so these are showing you details about events that were recorded and, and are originating in the Skylight platform. But here in the IORIS interface, these are visible. And when a user clicks on one of those, they'll see a card with detailed information coming from Skylight. And on the right-hand side, that card shows one of our satellite imagery um, events, which is a, a, one of the common event types in Skylight. So you can actually see the, here in IORIS, you can actually see the image um, that is coming from the Skylight system. Here's another example with one of our partners. In this case, it's um, from Argentina with the Coast Guard of Argentina. And again, they have a platform of their own, and that's the uh, screen image that we're seeing right now. But what they're doing with that small card that's in the middle of the screen, those are details 
of an event that originated from Skylight that they retrieve from our API. And you can in fact see that they've included um, the Skylight logo on the lower right of that card. Another partner that we have comes within, from within AI2, from our own institution, uh, and that's EarthRanger. And what this allows EarthRanger to do is to display satellite maritime events uh, that occur within marine parks because EarthRanger is a system that's focused on, um, on uh, park management. But by including information from Skylight, they can expand beyond um, uh, ground-based parks into marine parks as well. Um, and in this particular example, um, uh, the Earth Ranger interface is not showing all of the information that's available from Skylight. They've made decisions about what they want to show, uh, which is a subset of everything that they are retrieving from Skylight. So you do have that choice. When, if you work with a Skylight API, you can decide for yourself which individual fields and data points you would like to display. You don't have to accept everything that we send back. So I really appreciate um, your attendance or your attention during this presentation. And if you are interested in getting started using Skylight's API or you have questions about APIs in general that we might be able to answer for you, uh, we definitely encourage you or your web developers or IT people to get in touch with the Skylight team. And there's some contact information on this slide. Um, Nam Kola is our uh, product manager uh, and lead for the, the uh, Southeast Asia Pacific region. So she's a great contact to start with. And just in closing, I'd like to say a thank you to the UNODC and the Singapore IFC for inviting Skylight uh, to participate in this uh, presentation. And uh, thank you very much.